Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're back with another monthly recap video, this time for July. We are a little late for this one, but yeah, it's, late -ish. it's been late -ish. busy, it's been busy for we us. We aim for like that first week of the month sometimes, depending on scheduling and updating our, at this point, massive spreadsheet of ranking we for the year. We had a really long spreadsheet this month, so we're just going to dive right into it. We did make ourselves a specialty drink, and it's based off of one that we had, I want to say, in July... Right? Like, we had like a mule, I think, with like cranberry juice. The whiskey sour? Some sort of whiskey drink with ginger ale and cranberry juice, and that's what we're having today in our Jameson glasses. Cheers to the community. So, first up, best entree. Best entree for us this month. Uh, for me, I want to, I, I got a shout out to Pink's. For that Baja Beyond um, vegan, we're bouncing coast this month. Hot dog because oof, Pink's was amazing, but also the uh, pastrami spiced Impossible Burger at Lamplight Lounge. I really wish they had that um, at Disney World. A beautiful, beautiful dish. But my two favorites this year, this month or the month of July were in california a lot yeah. of california content in july it was like half and half I feel. we like rolled out the last one we did while we were in california you guys got to enjoy so my best of the month is actually here on the east coast you know the best coast the only coast the real coast with the cold water but the caribbean sticky ribs from caribbean beach resort center town market i really liked those those I did. were a fourth of july exclusive uh we i've had a lot of bad ribs on property but these ribs sort of redeemed most other places, except for one, and you guys have known which one it is. ABC Commissary. You never forgive you. But a runner up, super, super close second. Even though I rated this one higher than my favorite of the month, was the Pastrami Spice Impossible Burger. That thing was absolutely amazing. It was, like you said in our video, best Impossible Burger we've ever had. The spices on that were literally on fire. Cheers to the best entree. Dink. Worst entree of the month. Now, we had a lot of good food this month. There was also a lot of bad. I want to say that majority of our bad concentrates around Storyteller's Cafe at the Grand Californian. Which I'm not sorry. makes me sad. I think if Baird let me actually do the fine dining there instead of their buffet, he would have enjoyed dining at the Grand Californian a little bit more. But yeah, we, we, had, we had limits. We were on a budget. You guys helped out with that. Those of you that donated to our Kofi page and all the other support you give us, likes, comments, everything else has helped us make trips like that to California. So we appreciate that. But I'm not sorry about Grand California. It's fine. We did Storytellers <laughs> Cafe. We didn't have a good time. My worst entree was there. A lot of my worsts were there. Yeah. Um, they gave me an off-menu spaghetti, which was just terrible. Like, absolutely terrible. I rated it a 2, and that was being nice. I think so I said that, that it was, was my like worst. Chef for D level. It was it was worse. It's pretty that, bad for sure. It's pretty bad for sure. Mine was also from Story Dollars Cafe, but it was their roasted pastrami with the herb cream sauce. It was just a fatty, cold, tasteless mess. It was just like meat gum with like herb dressing. It Ew. was just not enjoyable. I didn't like a lot of the meats as Story Killers Cafe. That was like That's not true. a great time. Like most of the meat things I think you rated like under a three. So I got I give that a one point five. You know, that's a, that's like a Haribo spitting it out. If we had been out I think I actually said after we turned off the camera that I if, think so. If if we'd been outside, I would have spit it out. Yeah. So just just barely squeak by. I guess cheers to Storytellers Cafe. We're gonna be cheers cheersing to them a lot today. Yeah. I'm not going to say we had best times, so it was definitely the worst times. Best drink of the month. Now, my best drink, I want to say, was actually a non-alcoholic drink. The Jungle Julep from Bengal Barbecue. That was pretty I gave that one a four and a half. But also, I want to say the uh, Apple Cider Whiskey Sour from Polite Pig. I gave that a four and a half. And that is one of my go-to drinks whenever I go to Disney Springs. Even when we're just like walking around. That's one of the drinks that I, I get on the regular. Cider Whiskey so, Sour with, with uh, cinnamon on the rim. I can't not mention that one since I get it so often, but I absolutely loved that jungle julep from yep. Bengal Barbecue. It was probably my favorite thing that I had there. 
But yeah, the, the whiskey sour wheat was during our uh, Flavors of Florida festival yes. video. Uh, that wasn't part of the festival. We got it anyway. But you got another week for the festival. So if you're in Disney Springs or around Disney Springs, go get you some noms. August 14th is when it's over. Yes. So my best drink of the month, I couldn't stop raving about when I had it. There were so many drinks I rated like four and a half and above this month. It's true. I just love a lot of them were in California, shockingly enough, even yeah. though I talked hella shade about drinks in California not having like drink stands everywhere. The it's final true. fix at Lamplight, I dubbed my my uh, smoked turkey of the West favorite. Coast. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely in love with that drink, and we drink that every single time I go to Lamplight Lounge. That's it for me. I found my drink. There's no need to taste anything else. That's my favorite. There were other some good ones. The open the open ocean with the splash was great, but actually my second runner up of for the of the month was from Pim's Testing Lab. Their molecular meltdown. Uh, and I risked the biscuit for that one because there was a big lump of ice cream in there. And I did it with a single magic pill and absolutely loved that drink. A marshmallow style with ice cream and marshmallows. I felt like a kid that was old enough to drink. I feel like those are our two spots now when we go to Lip -like. California Adventure. Pim Stacy. Yeah, we're going to hit up both of those spots every time. For Cheers. sure. Cheers to the best. Oh, yeah. It's the best all around. around. You did a tap. I didn't do a tap. It's a, it's a form of technique over time. Worst drink of the month. Mm. My worst drink was that spicy margar or watermelon margarita from the Bayside Brews. I gave it a one, and it didn't even taste like it was mixed. It it's was just great. terrible. It was uh, absolutely I, I watched, terrible. I watched the, the, the bartender make that. No shame on them. It's off day. We all have off days, but watching them fill that cup to the brim with ice and then dump it in like whatever the watermelon juice it mixture was. It was like a, a, in a, a little like measuring cup thingy. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it, it did not look great right. and it didn't taste any better It was either. really bad. It definitely did not taste mixed. Either. I also read that one rather low, but my worst drink of the month was also a watermelon drink. Was a particle fizz from Pimp's Taste and oh, Lab. I had a yeah. lot of great things at Taste and mm. Lab, but it was watermelon seltzer like with one. watermelon boba balls, and it literally tasted to me like I was looking at a bar mat. It was not good. I hated it. That was the one drink there that I despised, and then, well, the watermelon seltzer, which is the base of the particle fizz. I thought the seltzer by itself was okay. It was a little better. It was a little better, but not that much. So I gave that one a 1.5. So I guess cheers to the worst drink. best appetizer or side of the month so for me it was really hard because i love the brussels caesar at lamplight lounge Those were good. like that was an appetizer that bear and i were literally fighting over stabby, stabby. and like we had to just try to kind of piece ourselves and share equally yes i gave that one a four and a half out of five and i absolutely loved it additionally the white bean hummus from cafe orleans i gave a four Four and a half out of five, and I really now want to make my own white bean hummus She's because I just think it, it just it was just it was so good, and I feel like Cafe Orleans doesn't really get a lot of credit considering how beautiful it is and its location and how good its food is. Like it's just well, kind it's, of like it's the right next red to Blue Bayou. That's, that's all everybody talks well, about. Well, yeah, yeah, and then the um. The bread bowl stand, too. Mm. Like, if you don't go to Blue Bayou, you're getting a bread bowl, and that's it. Hummus was good. Now, we keep white beans on hand, so one day maybe here we'll try it. My uh, best appetizer of the month was a surprise to even me. Is actually, I didn't rate it a 5. I rated it a 4.5, only because I only got two, or we got two, and had to share, was the vegetable dumplings at California Girls Prefix menu. Those dumplings, those peak dumpling, the peak, the peakity peak. The, the, the filling, the texture, uh, the little ridges in the top, the plating, that thing was amazing. I did give him a good portion of them yeah, just because he was very into yes, it. So I just, you know, I got to be nice to and the I know some of you guys looking at me, a vegetable dumpling. I did not miss the meat. I didn't care. It was so good. So good. And the next up for that was the chicken on the egg, which was the fried chicken, deviled like eggs, the hot honey. Bear coma. Bear coma. Cheers, Cheers to, to the, the best. best. They were some good ones, too. So here we go again. Worst 
appetizer side of the month. So we already told you we that warned you. a lot of our words are going to come from Storytellers Cafe. As you can tell, we did not have we a good time. Did, that was probably the worst Disney dining experience I've uh, ever had. It's not the worst I've ever had. Buffet. Worst, worst buffet. buffet. By far. By far. By far. The um, so they gave, they had an orzo pasta salad that the chef told me to grab before they added feta to it. Because so it was, un, it was, it was unfinished. supposed to have feta. Yeah. It was even a modification. It, it was unfinished. unfinished. <laughs> and they put it on the line already. Yeah. And chef was like, oh yeah, you better grab that before they throw feta in there. And I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and try it. And it was so bland. It was just like eating Plain pasta. like a flat, like a flat long grain rice with oil on it. It oil was a, not good. A, a douche, not even a dash, a douche of herbs. I gave it a two and mm. that was being really generous. I would not go back for that at all. Right. I would not go back for anything at Storyteller's Cafe, honestly, except, for, like except for one thing. Like except for except for that, yeah. So, my worst, also from Storyteller's Cafe, you sense the trend here, was the basil pasta. Which was just like, uh, it was like a well sauce pasta, but it was just nothing. I could have eaten anything else and got... I could have eaten the plate that it was on and and had better food. And the, the chef was nice. She walked us through. Chef but like, cool. I don't know the foods in the night. And we got a lot of comments about how other people had different experiences. And some of these restaurants do have off nights. But we review these places as they are at the time when we go. We're going to be hard-pressed to go back to Storytellers Cafe again. Well, the problem is that Story, so Storytellers Cafe is one of two restaurants. Only one of two restaurants that offer a dining package for the world of color. So if you want a dining package seating area for world of color, I had to deal with bad food. You're either going to Storytellers Cafe or you're going to that like Napa Rose like Italian restaurant that nobody was going to where all the servers are just hanging out. I guess I'm gonna have bad seats empty. then. And those those are your two restaurants. I'm just gonna have bad seats then. There's no reason to go to either of those at Lamplight right there. There's really no reason at all. Uh, it's, it's true. Oh, cheers to the worst. Best dessert of the month. Continuing our trend, I'm trying to try more desserts for you guys. Bear actually had a lot more desserts than I did, I did this I month. I regret it about this month. He did quite a few for you guys. I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud of him. For me, my favorite dessert was the vegan horchata cookie. I gave it a five. That was and like the, the best part of that whole it, dining. Yeah, it was the only thing that I really liked from Storytellers Cafe. It's a good cookie. It did taste like horchata. It was that amazing. Was it was it. amazing. I wish that they sold it um, around Disneyland, honestly. Because I'm not paying to go to a buffet Just for, cookie. for a cookie. Mm. And then my favorite month was the peanut butter... Uh, sorry, the peanut and uh, banana tort from California Grill. I had a really good time at California Grill. This yeah, time. you I, did, I, which I is out. so weird. Because I enjoyed a lot of what I had at California so Grill. He's so anti-California Grill usually, especially because of the price. Yeah, it's usually the price. It's not that there's anything wrong with California Grill. Is that it's, with the number of food reviews that we do, it's sometimes hard to justify going again when nothing had really changed since the last time we went. That's true. We just had different things on the 50th anniversary menu, which is fine. And we did like all those things. So it was a good time. I rated that a uh, four, five plus. The worst dessert, uh, I, I only had like three desserts. So my worst dessert was the chocolate chip cookie from Storytellers Cafe. I rated it a four. It was good. It wasn't the greatest. It was just, I would have rather just had more of that horchata cookie and called it a day. Mm -hmm. See, my worst of the month was the 4th of July special liege waffle uh, from the Connections Cafe, which is weird because Connections Eatery, which, we, is, yeah, it was the cafe. which is right yeah. behind it, has the liege waffle that's become so famous since Connections opened. Fresh made. It's a fresh made with like the whipped cream and the strawberries, super soft. The, but the 4th of July waffle was this pre-cooked, cold Hard waffle Pre with like these super sharp stars it was literally pain eating it. It like I, cut the roof of my mouth. Yeah, I thought you thing. said you like almost chipped your tooth or something. It was, Did you it not? Was, it was not great. It was just like I don't understand why this is so cold when you literally have a full bakery like behind right you. We had to stand in the Starbucks line to get 
That was waffle for it. him. I was like, wait, what? We we went to Connections Cafe. We went to the quick service area because we didn't see it on the app to purchase. And they were like, oh, no, we don't sell it here. You have to go around to the Starbucks. Great. So we legit had to go to Starbucks to get a prepackaged dessert that they make fresh on the other side of the restaurant. It makes no sense. And I, I'm, I'm probably too nice, but I gave it two and a half out of five plus. For somebody who likes some cold, sugary waffle, it was great. I did not enjoy it. We'll not ever get it again. Well, cheers to the to dessert because we skipped both. <sighs> oh, now moving on to the big peas. So we had a festival this month. We had a big festival this month. Epcot's biggest festival, the Food and Wine Festival for 2022. Uh, we went. A little extra this festival. We we really didn't because we had three park reservations booked and we only used two of them. Which but was our nice. our drink video was over an hour long. Yeah, we drank forty five. I, I guess we could have broken that up. I don't know. You guys let, let us know in the comments like well, how long. What's your tolerance for? Yeah, a drink video? like should we should we cut down the drink videos? Not sure. I mean, we got Halloween Horror Nights coming up, so we need to know this before we go crazy at Halloween Horror Nights. But for best festival food, for me, I have uh, two two uh, savory items that I say you absolutely have to get when you go to the festival. The adobo yuca fries are worth the wait. From the fry basket at uh, right in front of the test track area, I gave that a five. And then also, if you go to the India stand, there is the potato and pea samosa. I gave that a four and a half. Um, but also, I just want to mention the guava cake. That is my favorite dessert, my only vegan dessert. So, like, if I was to say get anything at um, the Food and Wine, it would be those three things. Yeah. Where it's I can't talk enough about how much I love takoyaki from japan a lot of people did not like this you know who you are sean uh sean mostly uh if you do not like octopus i do not suggest getting it get the get the chicken bun instead you love that chicken bun but not but he didn't like the salmon didn't like the salmon Salmon was terrible salmon was like regular cubed salmon with spicy mayo but the takoyaki oh, that brought me back i love that that could be like an every trip to food and wine for me if we went that much. But I absolutely loved it. Gave it a 5 out of 5 plus on Baron Tessie's list. I still dream about that takoyaki. Dream about it. Not as, good as some, not as good as some we've had in New York and other places. But it was still really good. So cheers to the best festival food. Yeah. Best Worst festival food. So for me, um, the whole of the fry flight was on the bottom of my list. The worst of the three uh, vegan fries that I could have gotten from the fry flight was the barbecue season fry. I gave it a two and a half. It was the most disappointing. It was just lightly seasoned with barbecue and it just, it just wasn't enough. If I had had like maybe two to three times more barbecue seasoning. Maybe I would have enjoyed it a little bit more, but like salt and vinegar and barbecue chips are like the two chips that we always have in this house. Like we don't get any other flavors but those two. So to have those two as fries in a fry flight was really cool for us because those are literally our two favorites and both of them let us down so Hard. I can't Did talk we, mm. enough shade about that fry flight. I know that the fly fright is the pretty boy of uh, food and wine festival. Everybody you see all across social media is talking about this fry flight. It's hot garbage. It is seven fifty. Don't get it. It's seven fifty. It's not worth it for three sleeves of fries that are frankly, and at this point, this word's kind of a slur. Not a not a racial slur, but it's mid. It's fries in a basket, and it's seven fifty. It's not great. I don't care how it's on Instagram. I don't care how much everybody smiles about it. The fly flight's trash. I would you say, if you're gonna get fries, do yourself a favor 
and either book the, or walk up to La Cellier and get you some vegan poutine or regular poutine from La Cellier and call it a day. Forget the fry basket. Although I love the yucca, just forget it. Just go get the poutine and enjoy yourself. Mm. So, cheers. Well, actually, well, no, I mean, you got to talk about so, yours. Uh, your best food festival. Worse. Or worse. Wet, worse. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, jump, worse. Jumping back. I sorry, I sorry, I sorry. So, the, uh, this, this started off great for me. I was very happy. I was excited to see it on the menu at the India booth, the crispy paneer. I love sheep cheese. That's my fault. I love sheep cheese. It's a Persian thing. I had the first bite, and I was like, I love this. It's like it's like a sheep cheese mozzarella stick, and I was in heaven. But the more I bought, I bit into it, the worse it got. It was dry and tough. Now it does come with a mango ketchup. Which obviously I couldn't have, but there was no reason for it to be that dry. It was like dried out tofu, crisp. It was not great, and it went from a four for me to a one point five. That's true. I didn't and finish it. I I introduced you to paneer, and I've shown you different ways to eat paneer, mm. and you knowing the proper ways to eat that cheese, and then having it turned into like a piece of tough tofu had to have been really different. I gave the benefit of the doubt. I figured that maybe it was just opening weekend and we get better. We've had friends that went just last weekend and it was also dry, tough, and flavorless. Skip it. I would love to recommend it if it was actually cooked well, but just just, just skip it. It's just not great. Not great at all. So it's cheers really, really unfortunate. to the worst festival food. It's the worst around. And now we're on to the best festival drink. So for me, my favorite festival drink, I got this drink three times, even though we only filmed it once. Yes. It was the Hana Fuji Apple Sake. I love I that. absolutely love it. I gave it a five. It's one of the first vegan sakes they've had there in a long time. Yes, um, at least two years. And then I also really enjoyed the Woodchuck Guava Another Hard Cider. I gave that one a five. I thought the Princess was Lover's really good. Princess Lover's some good guava. Those are good drinks. My favorite drink it was a surprise to even me because I thought that it was going to be the bourbon cider from Apple Seed Orchard, but it actually ended up being the Apple Blossom Sky with ginger beer. And you, you, I have issues with ginger beer in some drinks. This I absolutely love frozen cider it's with ginger cute. ale and, and, and marshmallows. I thought it was gonna be gross. I loved it, absolutely loved it. And one of the most fun drinks. We had during the festival. I agree. Or I had, because Francisco had because it wasn't vegan. But it's more for me. So as far as the worst drinks go. So cheers to the best drink. Oh, yes. My bad. I'm getting ahead of us now. It's me doing it instead of you. So worst festival drink. So the worst festival drink for me was the Boom Sauce IPA. It was we, rough. We got it from the America Pavilion. I actually did spit it out. And gave it a zero. So, so I think, when was the last time you spit something out? It's been a minute. It's been a very long time. It's usually me spitting stuff out. Because I'm picky when it comes to my drinks. But you, you don't spit things out that often. It, I saw the look on your face. It was, it, was, it was not great. It was nasty. But then, it was followed up by my worst drink. Which is also from the America Pavilion. Yes, it was that Bold Rock Roast Coffee Hard Cider. That's as weird as it sounds. It's a coffee flavored cider drink. Yeah, it was light, light colored. It was uh, weird. It was no, like it, it did taste as described, but it was literally coffee and cider. I was my mouth was not having it. I also gave that a zero. I wanted to spit that out, but I didn't have enough in my mouth to even spit out. I took a baby sip because I expected to hate it, and I absolutely did. So two zeros for us. That, that's all that's ever happened for our worst. A recap. Two been zeros? A, it's been a, yeah. Two zeros? No, yeah. it's never happened. Cheers to the worst two drink. zeros. Now Bear is going to freak out over how long his necessities last I went is. a little nuts this month. Just a little bit. <laughs> have fun I, I, eating I, I, this. I, I had a lot of good food. Don't judge have me. Have fun with this. So, we had the St. Cherie Bourbon Barrel Aged Cherry from Food & Wine. That was from Appleseed Orchard. I absolutely love that. That was my favorite one up until I had that Apple Blossom Sky. Then the Apple Blossom Sky, also on my Bare Necessities list, followed by the Haja, Haja, Hana, sorry, Hana Fuji Apple Sake, which That's was my one of your favorites. I loved. Then there was this Schaffenhopper Pineapple. 
Hefeweizen. He still talks about that beer. I do. Today, he was talking about it. The princess, uh, we, we drink a lot of drinks, over 45 for food and wine, and that was the only drink that we ordered bigger size. It's because he wanted it. I really did. That was the one thing on the, on the thing that she was like, I have to have that. Absolutely. She loved the grapefruit one. I was in love with pineapple. Definitely. If you love pineapple like I do, I think it's better than Ace Hard Pineapple Cider. It is more pineapple-y than Ace, that's true. Then there was the Strawberry Lemonade Hard Cider. Which was good. I had a lot of good ciders at Food and Wine this year. Uh, most of my good stuff was from Food and Wine or ciders. California. It was mostly ciders at Food and Wine yep. this year, I think. Oh, then there's the Swine Brine, because every year at Food and Wine is Swine Brine, baby. Swine so of brine course season. I got it. And made her watch me eat it. Oh, like usual. I'm used to it at this point. Then, of course, there was Takoyaki from Japan. The seafood salad from the uh, Spain booth at Food and Wine. A lot of food and wine food that I love this year. That one's gluten free. Which is odd. Oh, yes, it is gluten free. Then the Taco El Pastor from Food and Wine, the Mexico booth. It's also a favorite from this year, recommended to us by the staff, and they did not, did not lie. Uh, the Kung Pao Bao from Lamp Light Lounge, I fell in love with instantly. I was expecting a single bao, and I got three. And they were all delicious and filling. You can easily go to Lamp Light anytime you want. Order, order tapas. You don't need to order a full meal. It's so it's good. It's so true. You can get filled up super easy there. And another of my favorites is the vegan nachos. Were absolutely huge. They were so good. That's a two person plate. I couldn't eat anything else after ordering that, which is why we had to go back so I could eat the rest of the things. Right amount of spice. Good view and drinks. And then Chili Dog. A hot dog made my bare necessities list. Chili Dog from Pink's at City Walk Hollywood. That's because it's Pink's. Yep. Uh, then we had the pork belly skewer from pork for uh, Bengal barbecue in, in Disneyland. There are actually some Disneyland foods that I like, unlike Magic Kingdom here on the East Coast. So rude. It's very rude. I'm not sorry about it at all. The final fix from Lamp Light, which is now my official West Coast smoked turkey. The molecular meltdown from Pims, because I literally had a brain meltdown when I tried it. Pastrami, pastrami spice and Impossible Burger from Lamp Light. I told you this was long. Bears totally is just, just going. Uh, the Impossible Burger from Centertown Market. It was very good. It was very good. Uh, one of the most unique and flavor-packed Impossible Burgers on Walt Disney World property. Also available at Spike Glass Grill. Yes. Uh, the Brussels Sprout Caesar that we fought over at Lamplight. Oh, so good. Uh, the Nectar in the Rye from Lamplight. I gotta it's take you back good. to Lamplight, you guys. Look, at, love. look at this man. Glowing. <laughs> like Lamplight over here. Uh, the Backlot Michelada. From Hollywood Lounge DCA, mm -hmm. we drank our fill on DCA. That that thing had a kick. Well, chili rim. I mean, there's nowhere else Ooh. you can drink your fill at but DCA. That's true. <laughs> and then the uh, strawberry basil margarita from Flavors of Florida at Dockside Margaritas at Disney Springs. Which ends August 14th. I went a little crazy with the fives this month and the bare necessities. I promise you. All fives, you guys. All of them. I will calm down. No, you won't. Probably not. You, you, it, it's okay. You're expressing yourself. If you feel Through five, give a five. If you feel it, give But I it. promise you, if you get these things, I've only steered you wrong like three or four times. So. He doesn't steer you wrong. You guys come here for him and his opinions. Nobody so, comes here for me. cheers for Bear and his long AF Bear Necessities list. Now for the Princessities list. My Princessities list is not even as close to as long as bears. I was very selective on my princessities list. My princessities list includes the guava mousse cake that I mentioned earlier from Food and Wine Shimmering Sips. As long as she brushes off the coconut. The, yes, the adobo <laughs> yucca fry from the fry basket in front of Test Track. Fry fly is trash. The fly fried is trash, but definitely get that yucca because if you can't get yucca there, you're getting yucca at Centertown Market or you're going to Amatista, and those are the only other places you're going to get good yucca. Uh, the Hana Fuji Apple Sake, that was my bay. I had to put that on the list, especially since I ordered it three times over two days, opening week of food and wine. Um, the vegan horchata cookie from... Um, Storytellers Cafe. I really wish that, that horchata cookie was available at other places around Disneyland. Only a year I, more to you have again. I would not pay a dinner price just for a cookie. 
Um, the Baja Beyond Vegan Hot Dog from Pink's was a very unique hot dog that I really appreciated. Definitely more than the um, Hall of Fame. Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Universal Hot Dog Hall of Fame, Universal, Hall of Fame at City Walk, which was also really good, but definitely not as good as Pink's. Pink's was better. Yes. Um, and then, of course, the pastrami spiced Impossible Burger from Lamplight Lounge, which I took with me after we finished um, that meal and carried it around with me for the rest of the night so that I could eat, eat on it. Yes. We were enjoying our day and watching Fantasmic and just really soaking up our final day at Disneyland. She wants to go back already. I wanted. I was talking about going back and how much I was going to miss it the first day that we got to Disneyland. So, you know, it's it's home for me. It's where I grew up. That's where it all started for me. So it is what it is. But I'm also excited to explore other avenues of Disney, not just Disneyland and Disney World, but maybe Bear will let me go on a cruise. Maybe he'll let me travel to DLP. We, we maybe Alani. One we did talk time. about TDR. We were supposed to go in 2020. So who knows? Who knows what plans. he'll let me go plans. to in the future? But that has been our list of best and worst for the month. If you get any of our best in the next month, please tell us. Tag us Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Hashtag Princess and the Bear. You got YouTube. If you have and tag us a nice photo, we will share it on Instagram. Oh, for sure. And and let us know how Why you not? enjoyed it. Our best list, or even the worst. If you find something you hate that we didn't try, we need to go back and try. Tell us. Tag us. We, we don't know wanna, about it. We don't want to eat that stuff. This is a community. We're helping each other out. Help yeah. me not eat bad food. Help us help you. Unless you just want to see me eat terrible stuff. I know some of you do. We'll but, definitely post, you know, the goods and the bads. Until next month, we have more exciting stuff planned for you for the month of August. Uh, we have a lot of food coming up uh, prior to, to September when it's we're going to have Halloween Horror Night. spooky season. It's definitely spooky season. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to see us do, eat, go, learn, live, sleep, ride, All the fly, stuff sake. The stuff comments. And things, Coral. It's always in a place to let us know. Thank you for all your support on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook. YouTube. Kofi? And Kofi. We love and appreciate every one of you. If there's any world you'd like to see us go, the comments are always a good place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You were going to tell them how I was going to eat myself off the planet somewhere. Are you eating yourself somewhere? I'm not eating myself anywhere this you time. You can eat yourself home. on the couch. I will. Maybe, maybe I'll eat myself on the couch. You, th there's there's plenty of pillows. Go go eat Too yourself many. on the couch. There's only like an eighth. But you heard the girl.